going on everyone john matrix here hope you're having a wonderful day today we're going to be jumping back into the warhammer 40k universe we're going to be taking a look at the chapter master uh chapter leader whatever you want to call it of the uh, uh astartes minotaurs chapter uh Styrion moloch uh if that's how i'm pronouncing his name correctly uh bringer of wrath warhammer 40k lore this is by the remembrancer this has been a requested video by a few people for me to check out uh, so yeah, we're gonna jump into that here today. Uh, as always, links will be down below in the description to uh, the Remembrancer's channel and to this original video of his. So if you could do me a favor, click those links. Uh, if you enjoy this video, give uh, his original video a like. Check out uh, the content that he has in his channel. He makes a lot of great 40K content, so definitely check him out. Um, we're doing this reaction live from our YouTube members. So if you'd like to join in the conversation and discussions that we have before, during, and after these videos, there is a join button down below. There's also a link in the description to my YouTube membership uh, benefits that I offer. Uh, feel free to come in, you know, hang out while we do this. There's, uh, you can get the uh, videos up to a potentially week ahead of time. Um, there's the Discord that you can join, Just all kinds of uh, benefits. So check those out, see if any of those have any interest for you. Regardless, I just appreciate you guys hanging out, chilling, taking the time out of your busy days to watch these videos of mine really means a lot and i greatly appreciate you taking the time to do so uh so yeah let's jump into this so again this is uh asterion moloch moloch i will pronounce it uh bringer of wrath warhammer 40k video by the remembrancer i am let's go moloch was of course the centerpiece of the display he wore terminator armor of the old tartarus configuration which made him massive even amid the rest of that heavily armored. Interesting that Tartarus too, that was uh, the Greek, one of the part of the Greek underworld Tartarus, if I remember correctly. Company. Whereas Valoris was a picture of grizzled splendor and Garadon carried himself with a plain kind of martial dignity. Moloch looked like some barbarian warlord out of the legends of pre-unification terror. Mm. His plate was clearly of the highest quality, but had been engineered with a feral aesthetic one that conjured up images of sacrificial rites and arcane combat rituals. Like, I know this guy is supposed to be so badass to the point where uh, he even had uh, a custody that he was fighting questioning on whether or not he could beat him. So, I mean, it's like you're a regular space marine and you have a custody wondering whether or not you're they're able to, like, take you on. That's something. To look at him was to catch a glimpse of a world of riddles and myths of burning braziers and blooded axe heads, of secrets locked within secrets, bound about with labyrinths of iron and stone. I have encountered many formidable warriors in my time. Valoris, of course, was reckoned the greatest alive in the Imperium, save the Primarch himself. And yet, just there, in that place, I can say without hesitation that Asterion Moloch, chapter master of the Minotaurs, exuded the most powerful stench of violence I had ever been in the presence of. Damn. Shield Captain Valerian. The Adeptus Astartes are led by the most fearsome, cunning, and revered space marines. Paragons of resilience, wrath, and judgment, each chapter master of the Imperium shoulders the burden of leading their respective chapters into war zones of untold misery and carnage. Yet whilst many of these warriors are regaled as heroes, some are more clandestine in nature, despite fragments of their deeds spoken in hushed tones across the Imperium. For today, we shall elucidate the near-mythical chapter master, said to be among the most deadly of Astartes ever to wage war in the name of the Emperor. The mysterious leader of the Minotaur's chapter, Asterion Moloch. Among the Adeptus Astartes, there are a few chapters that have earned a reputation alike to the Minotaurs. Yeah, pretty much just like everyone kind of hates the Minotaurs. And aren't they like a branch of uh, the High Lords? They kind of like just answer to the High Lords, like the hit squad, of the High Lords of Terra, something like that, if I remember correctly. Brutal in their methods of waging war. And they kind of like specialize in hunting down other... It's not, I guess it's not that they necessarily just specialize in it, but they like relish the challenge of actually fighting, hunting down, and killing other Astartes because, you know, they want to test themselves against 
truly worthy opponents kind of a situation so they like any opportunity they get to actually hunt down fight capture and or kill other uh astartes they like relish the, the chance to do so something like that yeah they're a clean up clean up clean up crew when shit goes wrong if i could learn how to talk this mysterious chapter intervenes in only the most politically charged events of infighting the imperium is prone to endure said to be crafted from traitor gene seed supposedly derived mm. from the fourth legion of the legiones astartes the iron warriors whatever their progeny may be they have become synonymous as the enforcers of the will of the high lords of terror yeah. experts of attritional and siege warfare the minotaurs would be founded during the so-called cursed 21st founding during the 36th millennium and roam the galaxy as a fleet-based chapter enigmatic in their dealings with fellow space marine chapters the minotaurs records are kept censured and sealed within the most heavily mm. guarded and encrypted vaults of imperial records interesting to the point that even inquisitorial agents do not have sufficient authority to observe them even their title has been scrutinized by imperial historians for centuries due to the multiple accounts of chapters bearing the same name yet not sharing their appearance nor deeds whatever the case may be the minotaur's chapter has become a cause of great concern for members of the adeptus astartes ordo hereticus and even adeptus custodes due to their seemingly unrestrained circumvention of imperial hierarchies and bureaucratic red tape it seems interesting that they i guess would follow like you know take orders from the high lords essentially and not i don't know it just seems strange to me that for um a chapter that seems so oh how am i trying to, to put this like i don't know how i'm trying to put this it's not that they're like so big on like honor or something like that but i guess just the how from what i understand of them like how much they relish a challenge and facing the challenge and kind of like overcoming it and uh striving to be i guess like the the best of the best kind of a situation that they wouldn't follow other astartes or even like you know the primarchs and stuff like that but i i think they don't like gilliman right i think they hate gilliman um and, and i i think they have a lot of i guess potential resentment from things because of stuff that happened from the horus heresy and from the the primarchs that they were founded from so i guess that could be part of the answer but it's just interesting to me that they follow the high lord's you know word as opposed to someone else i guess in the chain of command with the starties you know what i mean i guess, I guess that's kind of what i'm getting at well they really did come from loyalist iron wars it would make sense that they're loyal high lords for them to live after the heresy i guess so yeah i mean that would make sense too to show their loyalty to the high lords you know for allowing them to live and for that their chapter not to be wiped out you know they it might be that they pledged an oath of service to the high lords and they're just beholden to that fealty kind of a situation so emboldened by their favor of the most powerful individuals of the administratum it would take a figure of only the most imposing and menacing stature to lead such a band of aloof warriors now shunned by venerated chapters such as the Ultramarines and their successors. A leader said to be among the most terrifying soldiers the Imperium has ever created. Earning such titles as the Spear of Judgment and Bringer of Wrath, despite the Minotaur True. chapter's enigmatic presence, there is no all shred the best of mystery gear. regarding the reputation of their overlord. A supremely paranoid yet dutiful leader, Asterion Moloch is a truly gargantuan figure clad in his panoply of war. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but isn't it a rumor that he might have been one of the early like experiments for the Primaris project? Right. Am I wrong about that? I could have swore I remember something where he might have been like one of the early candidates or was an early candidate and, and was part of like the Primaris uh space marine uh project or whatever and that's 
part of the reason why he's like so big and opposing and strong and as good as he is at what he's doing. I, I maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I'm like crossing lores, but I, I thought I heard that somewhere or read that somewhere. But I very well could be mistaken, and I could just be mixing things up and thinking of someone else. Wielding the mighty black spear, a relic said to originate from the armaments of the Legio Custodes of old, Moloch pairs such a legendary weapon with a gigantic storm shield, marked with archaic Terran glyphs of long forgotten significance. Clad in an ornate suit of Tartarus pattern technical dreadnought armor, this advanced pattern of Terminator armor provides greater mobility than standard patterns, whilst retaining its immense durability and protection. A brutally efficient commander, with a proclivity to unleash his forces with the intent of causing needless destruction whilst accomplishing their objectives. Unwilling to accept advisements or counsel from allies during cooperative campaigns with other Imperial forces, Moloch shall dispatch his trusted advisor, Chaplain Ivarnus Enkomi, as his representative during war councils. Said to have skulked the battlefields of the Badab War during the secession of the Astral yeah. Claws chapter. That's where I learned most about them, was they did a lot of stuff during the Badab War. And they, they took... <sighs> they took no prisoners during that shit. ...and their allies during the 41st millennium. It is unclear if Moloch's presence is merely rumor. Yet with the Minotaur's chapter's intervention of the Orphean War against the Necron dynasty of Maynarch, it is clear that Moloch would lead his chapter in the defense of the region of Amarar Prime alongside the Death Corps of Krieg. Facing the Necron Nemesaur, Kutlak, Asterion would injure the Overlord aboard his flagship, Dead Hand. Coming close to mm -hmm. ending the Maynarch dynasty in that moment, the Necrons would retreat from the battle to preserve their wounded pride and dignity. For while the system would inevitably fall into ruin following the destruction wrought by the Necrons, Moloch had proven once again that his strength was superior to even the ancient Xenos so assured in their supremacy despite their clear failures. Yet Moloch's deeds would take a darker turn as the prestige of the Minotaur's chapter grew. Famed for his victory against the Necron overlord Kudlak, Moloch would also slay several Orc war bosses, Corsair princes, and greater demons of chaos. Okay. Now a byword for slaughter and bloodshed, the Minotaur's chapter and their fell commander would begin to gain a reputation as experts of slaying their fellow Astartes. Yeah. Whispers would circulate Imperial administrational branches that the chapter had on several occasions executed dissenting and wayward Space Marine chapters. Yeah, like I said, they kind of really became the hit squad for the High Lords, from what I understand. And they would seek out opportunities to go and fight other Astartes. I think, A, as a way of, like, proving their loyalty, but also because, again, I, I, it's a situation where they, like, relish the challenge to fight worthy opponents. Evidence, though scant, clearly states that Hysterion Moloch has slain several renegade Adeptus Astartes chapter masters, though to which chapter they can be attributed as once commanding has been censured from Imperial records. Their intervention during the Badab War, demonstrating their skill at utterly destroying any chapter deemed traitorous in the eyes of the Imperium. Utterly devastating the Lamentus chapter in the span of only 17 solar hours during the Battle of Optera V, the Minotaurs would use such opportunities to fight their kin as a true test of their martial prowess. Right. It, it kind of makes me wonder, like, I mean, I guess it's a situation where, like, you don't really want to go into the warp, right? But, like, you would think a chapter like them that relishes the the the, the chance to fight other Astartes, they would, like, really, really want to go after whatever Chaos Space Marines they could get their hands on to just slaughter them, right? A, again, to prove their loyalty, but B, to just, you know, again fight other Astartes and then the fact that they're chaos based marines you know they're, they're 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 traitors i would think they would want that more than anything else i think that would be something that i would think anyway that would be something that they would want to like specialize in but wreaking untold losses on both sides of the conflict the minotaur's resolve would nonetheless force the lamenters to surrender should their chapter not be expunged from history yeah. as ignominious traitors to the throne I remember that with the Lamenters. During the defense of the Lion's Gate of Terror from demonic invasion, the Minotaurs and their leader would aid the Imperial forces, bolstered by the venerable Space Marine Primogenitor, the Imperial Fists, and the Emperor's finest warriors, the Adeptus Custodes. 
said to have escaped an assault led by the Death Guard Legion. In truth, the Minotaurs would be summoned by the so-called Hexarchy of the High Lords of Terror, seeking to depose the ruling strictures of the... Right, I mean, and that's what I mean. Like, they don't necessarily really want to go into the war because it's not turned out good, like, at all, ever. So, like, I gotta understand why... Like, unless the Chaos Space Marines come to them, like, you don't really get a chance to fight them, right? That's kind of one of the things that's, I guess, works into the, the, the Chaos Space Marines, like, advantage is they kind of usually, I guess now, especially that Katie is gone, they can kind of more dictate the, the terms of the engagements, you know? But, yeah, you would think that chapters like these, like the Minotaurs, they would want to take any chance they could to go fight other Chaos Space Marines and, and, and wipe them out. Yeah, I just learned about uh, Abyss Crusade the other day. I'm pretty sure every chapter that went in either was destroyed or fell to chaos. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like going into the warp is just, it's never going to turn out well. Like, maybe only if you're a Primarch, but even then, that's that's no bueno. It's crazy to me that uh, Cal Drago, or whatever his name is, that Chaos Space Marine guy, He's just wandering around in there just fighting shit, you know, because that's how big his balls are, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, he's just wandering around the warp, slaying shit, walking through Nurgle's garden, picking up roses and smelling them as he's killing, you know, demons and shit. Like, he doesn't care. He doesn't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Literally gives zero fucks. The Returned Avenging Son of the Imperium, Rebute Gilliman. Showing contempt and disregard for the Imperial Fist chapter and their leader, Poor Garadon, the Minotaurs would, despite their efficacy in combating the threat posed to the Imperial Palace, cause immense tension among the ranks of the Praetorians of Terror. The representatives of the Imperial Fists, Lieutenant of the Third Company, Haisler, and Minotaur Astartes known as Zojek, would brawl during their meeting to coordinate their forces. With only the intervention of the custodian, Oenas, able to prevent further bloodshed, the instrument of the will of the High Lords, Asterion and his men would conduct scorched earth tactics to purge terror of its insidious chaos cultist elements mm -hmm. until the coup of the High Lords would be enacted. That doesn't surprise me at all. Poor Garadon. That doesn't surprise me at all that they would, you know, uh, as well have like a contingent of Minotaurs that would be pretty much there at the beck and call of the High Lords to deal with any kind of issues going on in, on terror itself, cultist incursions, etc. Cause like aren't most cultist stuff or that isn't that supposed to be dealt by the the inquisition right but then again you know i guess like the the inquisitors can have the authority to recruit whatever of the, the space marines if they're around if they need them right they have the authority to just do that essentially so yeah i guess it wouldn't really matter you know one way or the other um, yeah, he's so OP, they have to keep him locked away in the warp, read tear Abbott on a new one, like, for real. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's crazy, like, to think about that, like, his will and resolve is so strong that he literally, like, he just lives in the warp as a physical being and gives zero fucks. He just wanders around doing whatever the hell he wants because his balls are just that massive, right? Like, uh, uh, yeah, Order Hereticus, and, yeah. Dude ripped down Retarian's heart and uh, beat Magnus, if I'm not mistaken, you gotta check his lore again. Yeah. So, it's like, yeah, that man's nuts. Trajan Valoris and their men would confront the usurper of the rule of the Ultramarines Primarch, Erfihima Talion, the master of the Administratum. Interesting. Allying himself with both deposed and serving members of the High Lords of Terror, including the Grand Master of the Assassinorum, Fadix, the Minotaurs would stand ready to combat the Imperial Fists and Custodes, should the command be given. Really? Yet Fadix's alliance would be a ruse, and with his intent revealed, he would unleash a dozen members of the clades of the Kalidus and Vindicare temples, ending the treachery of the conspirators. Yet the intent of Asterion Moloch would be unknown. As the- Yeah, from what, like- it seems like Magnus wasn't very capable as far as a warrior goes, right? Even though for like, even though he wasn't he like one of the largest, if not like the largest physical Primarch. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm mistaken about that. 
but he's like he's a pretty giant of a person and physically like seems imposing but from what i understand like yeah everyone has kind of be beaten up magnus at this point the coup collapsed asterion and his men were with treachery of the conspirators yet the intent of asterion moloch would be unknown as the coup collapsed asterion and his men would stand ready to fight the defenders of the throne yet with the intervention of the new master of the administratum violetta raskevla the minotaurs would stand down from the conflict and leave only a reminder of their menace upon Terra. Interesting. Those who so would... it sounds like there was almost a whole other like civil war thing that was going to happen here. The Minotaurs were poised to fight uh, some of the Iron Fists and the Ultramarines, but they exposed. Let me listen to this again. I don't want to listen to this again here. My lords, Asterion and his men would conduct scorched earth tactics to purge Terra of its insidious chaos cultist elements right. until the coup of the High Lords would be enacted. Okay, so the High Lords were attempting a coup, and did they feign loyalty to the High Lords during this? Is that what happened? Poor Garadon, Trajan Valoris, and their men would confront the usurper of the rule of the Ultramarines Primarch, Erfihim Italian, the master of the Administratum. Interesting. Um, one of his full power is nuts, almost killed Russ, and his Psyker awarded armor. Honestly, I always felt like Magnus was too weak for his potential. He should, uh, I mean, for real, like, if he's supposed to be, like, to my understanding, the Emperor and maybe Malkador were, like, the only other psychers at the time that were more powerful than Magnus, right? Like, at the time, it, it, as far as what, as far, as far as who was in the Imperium, like, those were, like, the top three most powerful psychers, and I think in that order. I think it was the Emperor, Malkador, and then Magnus. So it's like, if you're, if you're going on, on that kind of level, you would think Magnus would be way more powerful than what's happened to him. But so, the High Lords were enacting some kind of coup going on here. Forces. Keep getting distracted from this. With only the intervention of the Custodian, Oenas able to prevent further bloodshed. The instrument of the will of the High Lords, Asterion and his men would conduct scorched earth tactics to purge terror of its yeah. insidious chaos cultist elements until the coup of the High Lords would be enacted. Tor Garadon, Trajan Valoris, and their men would confront the usurper of the rule of the Ultramarines Primarch, Erfihim Italian, the master of the Administrator. So the three of them challenged Gilliman? Allying himself with both deposed and serving members of the High Lords of Terra, including the Grand Master of the Assassinorum, Fadix, the Minotaurs would stand ready to combat the Imperial Fists and Custodes, should the command be given. Gotcha. Yet Fadix's alliance would be a ruse, and with okay. his intent revealed, he would unleash a dozen members of the clades of the Kalidus and Vindicare temples, ending the treachery of the conspirators. Gotcha. So who's playing the High Lords? He, he, he was an inside man playing the High Lords, and, uh, yeah. Played, played them and set them up for failure. Yet the intent of Asterion Moloch would be unknown. As the coup collapsed, Asterion and his men would stand ready to fight the defenders of the throne. Yet with the intervention of the new master okay. of the Administratum, Violetta Raskevla, the Minotaurs would stand down from the conflict and leave... Uh, I believe what goes Biggie, Magnus, and Malkador, but I mean, because he's a prime work, but Malkador is no joke at all. I mean, it might be the case. I know, like, from, from what the lore I've read, like, Malkador was the most powerful, like, human psyker, other than, I guess, the Emperor, but, like, is the Emperor even really human? And then the Primarchs aren't, you know, really human either. You know what I mean? So it's like... And plus, Malkador was the right-hand man to uh, the Emperor himself, so. Uh, Laura was actually super powerful too once he unlocked his potential in the heresy. Leave only a reminder of their menace upon terror. Those who witness their fury relieved that such ruin shall be unleashed against the enemies of the Imperium far away from its throne world.
Okay, so the Minotaurs were set up to defend the High Lords who were attempting a coup to overthrow Gilliman. This dude who was working with the High Lords uh, feigned uh, treachery, set them up for failure. The coup fell apart before it happened. Uh, and then the Minotaurs were poised to fight the Custodes and the other defenders, but then the new leader uh who was taking the place of the high lords i guess kind of called everything off and before any kind of like super bloodshed happened between everyone i got gotcha. you while infamous for his deeds there nonetheless remains much of asterion moloch's legacy that confounds imperial scholars said to be fatally wounded during the battle against the necron overlord kutlak moloch's body would be cast into the void of space with the conclusion of his battle and be recorded as killed in action by his chapter yeah there's a little uh a little alfarious going on here with that stuff where it's like is it really him is the moniker something that's been passed down over time with the suit of armor you know is whoever wears the suit of armor are they then asterian moloch and and then you know deemed worthy to lead the minotaurs kind of a situation Despite such records being recovered from astute scholars of the Imperium, six other instances of the death of Asterion Moloch have been yeah. accrued from the past five centuries of the chapter's after-action reports. Or is he potentially just a perpetual? You know, is he just some kind of crazy badass uh, space marine that happens to be a perpetual? And, like, every time he dies, he just regenerates. Like, uh, uh, the Salamander's Primarch, I can't think of his name, Vulcan, right? I was Vulcan. A possible reason for Asterion's noted inactivity for several periods of time could be a result of his immense cybernetic implantations said to reconstruct his physique. Or that. Rumors persist that Asterion Moloch is not a singular space marine, but rather an engrammatically infused conglomeration of past memories, experiences, and personalities inherited from the slain chapter masters of the Minotaur's chapter. Interesting. So, uh, uh, Along with, I guess, potentially taking his gene seed to implant in someone else, they would also take his memories and then his personality and memories would dominate that person and that person would just become a Sterian Moloch again. That'd be interesting. Such heretical assertions bear no evidence, yet would explain the lapses in the chapter's records of their master. Should such technologies be employed, only the most forbidden artifacts of humanity's dark past would prove capable of such procedures, though where such archaeotech would be found remains purely as conjecture. Well, and that's why I thought there was some connection potentially with him and uh, the Primaris Project stuff. And that's why, like, he keeps being brought back, because, like, every time, uh, like, he gets experimented on more or something like that. I, I could be again crossing my lore with something else. For the rivals and enemies of the Minotaurs continue to grow, and such claims may be the result of bitter detractors constructing falsities to besmirch the chapter as a result of their deeds of merciless slaughter. Upon his brazen throne within the labyrinthine chambers of the Minotaur's assault carrier, Daedalus Crater, Asterion's spite fuels his chapter's campaigns of eradication across the stars. Leading his men at the forefront of battle, there are seldom few chapters of the Imperium more harrowing to face in battle. For the bringer of wrath and harbinger of ruin shall never relent in his merciless purge of the wicked of the Imperium. Whether they profess to be followers of chaos or loyal to the Imperium in their cause, should the judgment of the Master of Minotaurs be required, the only choice given to his foes shall be death or surrender. The ranks of the Militarum troops parted, and the Minotaurs made their way to the forefront. There were thirty of them, with no doubt more making their way from the positions further down the long aisles. They carried themselves like executioners, stalking deliberately, bolters trained on us, power weapons crackling. Once they were in position, just a few meters from the first steps up to the podium, they too halted. They formed up in two lines, spread out before us, leaving a gap between to allow their master to emerge. Moloch wore his Tartarus armor, as ever,
the bronze of it near black, its ornate surface engraved with runes and esoteric patterns. His footfalls were purposively heavy, sending spiderwebs of cracks across the damaged stone. He carried a power spear of a similar pattern to ours, though it was darker and older than any I had borne. Interesting. His red cloak hung from molten lead across his angular shoulders, and he carried a circular shield with symbols engraved on it that I could not decipher. I watched him approach, trying to ascertain some weakness, some flaw that I could use against him. I detected nothing. He may as well have been an automaton, a battle creation forged in some dark and forgotten laboratory and sent into the world of the living. Who could have halted such a monster? Valoris, in all probability. Gilliman, without a doubt. Beyond that, and as for myself, I felt no certainty. Mm -hmm. I took a step forward, moving between Moloch and Fadix, angling the tip of my spear towards the oncoming chapter master. No further, I commanded, gripping the stave tight with both hands. Moloch always wore his mask. I had never seen him without it. I picked up nothing behind that metallic visage, nothing at all, except maybe that furnace aura of aggression he always projected, smoldering deep within the rune-guarded heart of Ceramite and Sinew. He kept coming. He carried his spear formally, as if it were some kind of sacrificial totem, a curse-warded instrument for the ritual killing of beasts. The lenses in his archaic helm were black, and to look into them felt like looking into the void itself. There was a swagger in his every movement, swagger. a rolling, baleful demonstration of pure contempt. No further, I warned again, tensing to strike. The moment he took a step onto the podium of stairs, I would move. To this day, I do not know what would have happened if he had done so. I suffer neither from doubt nor from pride, and so can only speculate from the evidence I had before me. Perhaps I would have found a way. I had failed some of the greatest warriors of the enemy in my time, including many who most certainly had possessed the power to best me. But with Moloch, I cannot be sure. We were only prevented from coming together in combat by the sudden spit and crackle of a single teleport column streaking down from the cathedral's ruined heights. The ether vortex locked onto the Raphavian's lock signal, crashing into the nave's tortured floor, splashing against the flags of the podium and boiling away. As I felt the rush of sudden cold and saw the white silver energy reflect in Moloch's burnished plate, I thought for a moment that Valoris had come, or perhaps Garadon, bringing with him the reinforcements we needed to fight our way out. I was to be disappointed. Instead, a single figure emerged from the guttering warp flame to stand by my side. It was a woman, clad in protective gear for the Eva translation, but otherwise unharmed. I knew her only by sight, Violetta Roscavla, one of the two who had claimed ownership of the title of Master of the Administratum. Except that her rival was now dead, extinguished by an assassin's bullet, removing all possible doubt as to her legitimacy. She said nothing to me. She said nothing to anyone else. In front of all those thousands of fighters, in front of the assembled Space Marines, any one of which could have ended her with a single shot, she walked steadily down the steps. She came up to Moloch, looking less than a child before his colossal frame. I saw her hold up the icon of her office, the sigil of beaten iron borne by its holders since the dawn of the Imperial Age, but otherwise no gesture. Moloch let her approach. He waited for her, as if suddenly subject to some hex or enchantment, mm. his mighty limbs bound by unseen forces. When she lifted herself to speak into his ear, he bent down to allow her, so that the words passed between them unheard by any other soul in that place. Having Interesting. Spoken, Roscavla then withdrew from him, walking back up the steps to join us again. Moloch straightened. He looked at me, and then at Vardix. Silence reigned across the entire cavernous space, unbroken and complete. Then, slowly, he turned away. He trudged back to the way he had come, his cloak flickering around his ankles, and his warriors followed him. I watched them all go. The whole time, I never loosed the grip on my spear. Watchers of the Shown, the Regents, uh, the Regent Shadow, Black Library, Chris Wright. And I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a custodian saying this. So, like, that's, that's, that's Moloch facing a custodian. So, I mean, yeah.
This has been a tale of the great Imperium of Man. You gotta show how much of a badass he was. By the Remembrancer. Asterion Moloch's campaigns of ruination continue to ravage the enemies of the Imperium across the galaxy. Yet take heart that his fury shall never cast a shadow upon your door. Only the most heinous shall incur the Emperor's wrath and judgment of the Minotaurs. And should you remain true to the Master of Mankind's vision of a united Imperium, you shall never witness the visage of the Brazen Warlord, nor incur the terrible bite of the Black Spear. All right. Well, there we go. That's a staring Moloch by the Remembrancer. Um, so yeah, links to the original video and to the Remembrancer's channel will be down below in the description. Do me a favor, click those links, go over there if you like this video, give this video if it's a like, and uh, check out the rest of his content. And if he's got content you enjoy, give the man a sub. Definitely deserves it. So, uh, you know, I like the idea, you know, that <laughs> this guy's such a badass that he even had uh, a custodian on his back foot, wondering whether or not he could actually fight this guy and beat him. You know, when you have a regular space marine that's capable of, uh, I guess, instilling fear or doubt in the mind of a custodian, that's quite the presence. That's quite the presence. It's interesting though, too, that he's just got this, the, the mystery around him of, you know, has he really died? Has he not died? Uh, is, is this like a moniker that gets passed down between people that uh, have proven themselves to be able to lead the Minotaurs? Is it a situation where like, yeah, along with, I guess, potentially his gene seed being passed down that, um, uh, the memories and personality of Moloch get uh, passed down with all his uh, experience and skills and so that personality and idea takes over the other space marines body and they essentially become Moloch is it a situation where he's got such crazy cybernetic implant stuff that uh, they're able to revive him from death you know kind of a situation they didn't mention anything in this video about him potentially being part of the Primera Space Marine project. Maybe that was uh, some kind of fan theory thing that I read or heard somewhere. But I, I swear I remember him potentially being some kind of early subject for uh, something to do with the Primera Space Marines. But I could be very wrong. Um, you know, I guess maybe potentially could also be a perpetual but uh, like you're saying here, Michael, you don't believe any space marines uh, are perpetuals other than, um, you know, Lucius and uh, the Grey Knight. And I think the, the one Grey Knight you're talking about is the one that has the Shard of Magnus, like the first Grey Knight, I think, something like that. So that would be the reasons why. But very interesting character. I would love to learn more about him. Hopefully they have more lore and more information about him. Hopefully he's a character they kind of do more with in the future as more stories and books get put out there um but yeah so again that was staring the lock uh bring our wrath warmer 40k lore by the remembrancer um doing this reaction live from our youtube members so if you uh enjoyed uh coming in here and watching this reaction you can join us join the discussions as we do this uh there's a join button down below you can feel free to click that there's also a link down in the description to the membership benefits check them out see if they have any interest for you uh usually give up to about a week's worth of uh, early access to the videos there's a discord you can get your name at the end of the videos as a thank you lots of stuff like that so check them out see if they have any kind of interest in you, and if you'd like to take your support for the channel to the next level regardless of that i just appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy day to come in and hang out and watch the videos it means a lot really appreciate it if you enjoyed this uh reaction of mine consider leaving a like and a sub as it helps me and it helps the channel grow and uh yeah thanks i just appreciate you guys watching the video man Hope you're having a wonderful day, and we'll see you guys on the next.